It's out of the basement and into the backyard for the model train set. This trend is called garden railroading and it merges two hobbies, gardening and model trains. These outdoor train sets are often larger and more rugged than indoor ones. So people can hop aboard for a tour of the perennials. These garden variety train sets have become the fastest growing segment of model railroading. People design gardens to the scale of these trains to provide the perfect backdrop. This particular locomotive is a quarter of the size of the 19th century original. It starts with a sheet of copper, cut to precise measurements with a guillotine blade. An employee then turns the crank of a machine to curl the sheet into a cylinder shape. This cylinder will serve as the barrel or outer casing of the boiler. The next worker assembles the boiler's internal components. He groups together numerous copper tubes and welds them to a firebox at one end and a copper plate at the other. He's now ready to enclose the firebox. He installs it on a base plate and then builds a protective shell around it. He then encases the heat tubes in the barrel. These boilers come in various sizes, depending on the scale of the locomotive being made. Next, a lathe spins as tools contour a bronze cylinder. This sizes it to fit a piston that sets the steam engine's wheels in motion. The cylinder on the right is the one that's just been machined. More tools transform basic steel discs into the train wheels. They make four wheels per locomotive. The next worker inserts a pre-cut sheet of steel in a device which, when activated, bends it in two places. The folding action shapes the sheet into the locomotive cab. Then it's into the paint booth for seven coats of epoxy paint. This gives this model train cab a heavy-duty gloss. With a steady hand, a painter now applies plastic tape around the perimeter of the cab to create a kind of linear stencil. He arcs the tape at the corners to soften the look. And then he brushes two coats of oil-based paint into the taped stencil. He allows three days for each coat to dry. Then he peels off the tape to reveal the crisp, clean lines that now frame the cab. He adds a black border next to the white to give more depth to this custom paint job. They carve a piece of bronze into a valve to control the flow of steam to the piston. They assemble the locomotive chassis and paint it. They install the wheels and the network of pipes and parts that make them turn. They run compressed air through the system to confirm everything works. The worker adds a little oil to lubricate the wheels and the rest of the parts. He then opens the steam chamber to check the valve and piston action, which is the driving force of this steam locomotive. He pulls the forward and reverse lever to confirm that the wheels run in both directions. He applies the brakes and the wheels grind to a halt. Now that everything on the chassis has checked out, this steam locomotive is ready for the chimney and boiler. The steam dome and safety valve go on next followed by the cab and roof. This garden steam locomotive is now complete. A worker shines a light through the boiler tubes to examine them for any obstructions. He pokes a brush through them to be certain and then gives them the all clear. It's time to fire up the boiler using real coal. Hot gases flow through the tubes to heat the water in the boiler. Like a big kettle, this locomotive builds up steam. The pressure increases until it's ready to roll. Aboard one of these garden locomotive replicas, one can relive the heady days of steam engines.
Hey, 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 hey.